Hey there and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will go through top 10 BI conceptual interview questions that you will definitely come across in any of the BI interview that you are going to attend. We will cover concepts like data warehousing, database, data visualization, ETL process, what is business intelligence and the difference between data analytics and what are key performance indicators throughout the video. And all these concepts form the backbone of modern BI and are essential for leveraging data to drive any business decision. So let us start with our first question. So our first question is, what is business intelligence? And it is also important to understand what is the role of a business intelligence analyst and what is the role of a data analyst before choosing a career in data. There are also multiple roles within data sector, which are data engineering, data scientist, data architect, data consultant, and there are various other roles as well. Now let us see what is business intelligence. Business intelligence refers to technology, application, and practice for collection, integration, analysis, and presentation of business information. So it is with respect to a particular business. The purpose of BI is to support better business decision making. BI system provide historical, current and predictive view of business operation. But in not all the cases, BI deals with predictive analytics and all. Mostly, BI will deal with historical data and the current data. And now moving on to our second question. What is data warehouse and how does it differ from a database? A data warehouse is a central repository which is designed for storing large volume of structured data from multiple sources and it will be optimized for query and analysis rather than transaction processing. And it integrates data from various sources to provide a unified view for reporting and analysis. So that is what a data warehouse is. Now what is a database? Database on the other hand is designed for transactional processing and is optimized for create, read, update and delete. So these are the operations which are commonly happening on a database. Database handle current data for day-to-day -day operations, whereas data warehouse store historical data for analysis. We can also modify the definition a little bit like data warehouse can be considered as oil AP and database can be considered as oil TP. Oil AP is online analytical processing and oil TP is online transaction processing. The next question will be explain ETL process. So ETL stand for extract, transform and load. And sometimes it will be ELT process. During that time, the first process would be extract, then the next process will be load, and then only transformation process will be happening. Normally, it is ETL process. It is the process of extracting data from various sources, transform the data into a suitable format, and loading it into a data warehouse. So, extracting means data is gathered from different sources such as database, cloud storage, or APIs, and it is consolidated to a data warehouse. And transform is data is cleaned, formatted, and transformed to meet the requirement of the target data warehouse. And this may also in involve data validation, data conversion, and data enrichment. And the third one is loading. The transformed data is loaded into the data warehouse, making it available for analysis and reporting. So that is extract, transform, and load with respect to ETL process. The next question would be, what are some common BI tools that you have used? And some of the common BI tools which you will come across will be Tableau, Power BI, Looker, Looker Studio, Quirik View, SAP Business Object. And out of this, the most common will be Tableau, Power BI and Looker. Currently, Tableau and Power BI contributes to majority of the market share, but Looker is catching up. And you can also give some examples based on your experience and the sample POC dashboards which you have developed. You can also take some examples based on that and explain some concept which you have used on that particular tool for the question. Now, the next question will be, how do you ensure data quality in a BA project? So ensuring data quality actually involves multiple steps. So we can actually split this question into different parts and each of the different term can be explained, which are data profiling, data cleaning, data validation, data integration, and finally monitoring and auditing. And each of these terms you will have come across if you have gone through any of the BA tool, which we saw in the previous question. So data profiling, it is assessing the source data to understand its structure quality and potential issues. So that is data profiling. Now coming to data cleaning, it is removing or correcting inaccuracies, duplicates and inconsistencies within the data. Now the third point will be data validation. So data validation is conducted in order to ensure the defined standard and business rule which the data has to meet with respect to that particular business. The next one will be data integration. It is harmonizing data from different sources to ensure consistency, which means we are doing some transformation so that all the data which are fetched from multiple sources, when we pull all the data to a data warehouse, it should be in the same format. The final step would be monitoring and auditing. Conti continuously monitoring data quality and auditing changes 
to maintain high data integrity. So this can be done using different methods with respect to specific tool. For example, in Looker, actually we can write some LookML code to check if there are repeating primary keys. So whenever we run the code, it will always check the backend and see if there are any duplicates. And if there are any duplicates, we want to pull the data into some particular dashboard. And in Power BI and Tableau also, we may write similar calculations and functions and see if there are any problem with the data and we can continuously monitor this without manually checking each and every field. The next question is, what is a KPI and how do we define one? A key performance indicator is a measurable value that indicates how effectively a company is achieving its key objective with respect to their particular business. And in order to define a KPI, we may follow the following steps. So the first step would be identify a business goal and then be specific and clearly define what you are measuring and why and make it measurable, which means ensure the KPI can be quantified with reliable data. So we can provide some examples and tell that these are the particular KPI which we are going to find for a particular business and based on that give some examples as well. Then establish some benchmark or target to measure the success and you can compare the target with the particular KPI that you have attained and based on that also you can explain the concept. And finally we can also tell that we can regularly review KPI and adjust them as per business goal. So the basic aim of KPI is to regularly review the same and adjust different components with respect to that KPI and in order to evolve the business goal based on that KPI. Now moving on to our next question, what is OLAP and how does it differ from OLTP? So OLAP is online analytical processing and OLTP is online transaction processing. And OLAP is a category of data processing that enable complex analysis of data involving large volume of historical data. It is used for data mining, trend analysis and business reporting. And OLTP is designed for managing transaction oriented application focusing on data entry and retrieval operation in real time. So for example, OLTP can, can be considered as a transactional database. So whenever some business is making a transaction, that database is getting updated. But OLTP can be considered as the next step of OLTP, where we are going to write some query on that OLTP table and we are fetching some aggregated result and saving into a particular data warehouse and that can be considered as OLAP, which is online analytical processing. The next question would be specific to your experience. So can you explain a time when you improved a BI process or a system? So you can take some specific example and you can explain with the help of some key performance indicators or some graph or some analysis technique, how you have improved some BI process or some business process. Yeah, so for instance, uh, take this as an example. So in my previous role, I noticed that the ETL process was taking too long due to inefficient data transformation. So what I did was I introduced an incremental loading strategy and optimized the SQL queries used in the transformation phase. And based on that, the ETL process time was reduced by 50%, improving the overall performance of our BI system and providing more timely data to our analyst. So this can be considered as an example because the statement consists of the problem, the solution, and the measure of that particular solution and what was the final effect of that implemented strategy. Now going on to the ninth question, how do you handle data security in BI? So this question can be answered specifically taking some example with respect to some tools. For example, in Tableau, Power BI or in Looker, we can implement techniques like raw level security or user level security, and we can limit the amount of data that can be seen, for a, seen by a particular person or a particular role. Similar examples you can take from your own experience and explain the scenario where you have implemented some kind of security in the BI tool. And going to the final question, what is the difference between descriptive predictive and descriptive analytics. The first one is descriptive analytics. Mostly BI is about descriptive analytics. So ana analyzing historical data to understand what has happened in the past and it involves reporting and data visualization to summarize the data. Now going to predictive analytics. Predictive analytics uses statistical models, machine learning techniques in order to predict future outcome based on the historical data. And also it aims to forecast trend and behavior based on the historical data. And moving on to prescriptive analytics, it recommends actionable insights based on predictive analytic results. It provides suggestions to optimize decision based on the predictive analytics or the descriptive analytics which we have conducted in the previous steps. And these are the top 10 BI conceptual questions that you will come across in any of the BI interviews that you will attend in the future. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, subscribe for more such content. Thank you.